Even though I've never watched a film featuring today's master, I have studied Michael Jackson, and he was a massive fan. Even without seeing one of his films, everyone knows that today's master was called Twinkle Toads. But I believe it's here in astrology that you will find a very good reason as to why this is so. In today's Masters episode, we're having coffee with silver screen dance legend, Fred Astaire. So why was he called Twinkle Toes? The answer is written in the stars, of course, in Fred's fifth house of creativity, featuring twinkling Pisces. Now Pisces rules the feet, and in this house we have a glittering and gorgeous exalted Venus. This is also the house of creativity, right? So twinkle toes. No wonder he earned such an appropriate nickname. I also believe it's this exalted Venus together with an exalted moon in the seventh house of fame that made life look so beautiful all around him. This was a life dripping with beautiful co-stars, jewels, chiffon, tap shoes and tails. The planet of brute strength and brawn is muted in this chart, with Mars debilitated in the ninth house. However, some masculine energies are very strong in this chart. With an exalted sun, this is very much the chart of a nobleman, who is sure to get to the top of any class system that might form around him in that worldly sixth house of his. But would that journey to the top be effortless? No, not at all. Saturn in the second house is for sure indicating a tough childhood and wealth that would be hard fought and won. This planet put him to work when he was only a child. During Mars Mahadasha, Esther received training in dance, speaking, singing and acting, all of which he would go on to do for an extraordinary 76 years. When Rahu Mahadasha clicked in, young Fred went to work on stage, as his father had lost his job and the family was in need. Saturn being conjunct to Rahu, and in miracle degree, made Esther enormously responsible and hardworking from a very young age. It was Jupiter Mahadasha that expanded his horizons and delivered some incredible creative partnerships, including the one with the equally gifted Ginger Rogers. If we look at this in the chart, we can see Astaire's partnership house is lauded by an exalted Venus who rules both the 7th and 12th houses. The exchange between Jupiter and Venus imbued a transportative quality to their creative teamwork. Watching these two took you to dreamlike places in consciousness that you'd never want to leave, that made it seem like heaven was something real that you could reach out and touch. If we look at the mechanics behind Fred's extraordinary creativity, we can see it all in the fifth houses of D1, D9 and D10. An exalted Venus, which to me provides the look of the work, sits on top of the internal mechanics as seen in the D9's fifth house. Saturn and Mercury conjunct in Aries, ruled by Mars. So that's Saturn, the long hours, long decades of work even, the dedication, the responsibility. We've got Mercury, the millions of small repetitive movements, and Mars, the physical body. All of this on top of D10's fifth house, which is where all of this would play out, on Hollywood's silver screen. The silvery light, of course, being supplied by that stunning exalted moon. In all the research I did, my favorite thing to see was this breathtaking performance, where he actually dances with Ginger Rogers' aura. In a scene that some might call spooky, I think it's in this performance where he exposes hidden elements of his personality. Elements that we can clearly see in his D1 natal chart. 
To me, it's in this performance we can see that Ketu in Mercury and his ascendant really light up. He didn't need to touch you to move you, just as ascended masters so often do from beyond the veil. While there's always so much more to say, I'm going to sign off for now. Hope you like the new format Masters series and I look forward to seeing you next time.